Hi everyone, my name is Justin Nodisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a freeze frame clone trail effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. So make sure you leave a like below if you've been enjoying these effects, and if you're new to the channel, then subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Justin Nodisho if you want to reach out to me. So I've got this clip on the timeline, and this is going to work best with a tripod standstill shot where one subject is moving through the timeline. Any camera movement, such as panning across the scene, would be a separate tutorial that we'd need After Effects for, a bit more advanced for a separate day. So I've got this clip here, perfect example, just a skateboarder doing a quick trick across the screen, and we can already imagine where we could have some snapshots of him for him to fill in as he moves across the screen. So I'm gonna show you two ways that you can do this, one all in Premiere Pro, and one with a little bit of an assist from Photoshop to make your life a little bit easier. So first, let's figure out where we want the snapshots to be. So I'm thinking one right there is kind of cool, one right here when he lands, and then maybe just another one right here for fun. So we're gonna just build this out one by one, and let's start by just placing our cursor exactly where we want the first freeze frame to be. So I'll do right here. Now there's a lot of ways that you could duplicate the clip and work with it, but the one that I'm gonna use is clicking this export frame button and make sure you check import into project. Now what this is gonna do is gonna create a JPEG screenshot and it will also place it on your desktop so you can go through and organize that later, but it'll also bring it into your project's media bin. So if I press okay, I see that I now have this screenshot that I can click and drag onto my timeline on a track above the original clip. So I'm just gonna cut it down to end exactly where the cursor is at and now we just need to cut it out by using the pen tool and masking options. So if I click the pen tool, I can actually double click on the program window so I have more room to work, and I can start just creating a selection that cuts out this entire object. And this is if you wanna do it all in Premiere Pro, which can be a bit tedious, but the way the pen tool works, basically you click and add points, and if you click and drag, you can add curved points. And also if you hold option, you can pull the tail ends back into direction so you can get back on track. So you could go through and make a whole cutout selection like I just did here using the pen tool and then double click on the program window to take it back. I'll take it back to fit mode. And if I hide the visibility of the original clip, you can see we've created a transparent cutout freeze frame clone of the object. So now it kind of goes in and once he reaches that point, the clip ends and he kind of eats the clone. Now a few things about the mask, you can make it more feathered or less feathered if you need some cleaner edges. Also you can adjust the expansion to be more outward or inward if you messed up a little bit. So if you wanted, you could go through the whole project all in Adobe Premiere and just create the effect using the built-in opacity pen tool mask. However, if you wanted to use some Photoshop to make your life a bit easier and faster, let me show you how you could use Photoshop as I do this second clone here. So we'll do one right as he lands We'll create another snapshot just the same. However, this time when it pops up in the project media bin, let's right click and choose edit in Adobe Photoshop. As long as you have the Creative Cloud suite, you should have all these options. Now what that's gonna do is open that JPEG in Photoshop where we have much easier selection tools like the quick selection tool or even the magnetic lasso tool or if you wanted the pen tool which is just kind of easier to use and more flexible in Photoshop. So if I use the quick selection tool, I can use the plus mode and quickly select out the object and look how accurate it is as long as we have a pretty crisp object. And for these more thin parts, I could go in with the magnetic or polygonal lasso tool and using subtract and add modes, I could cut away the portions that I don't need in between the legs, which is kind of difficult to do in Premiere. And I could select out exactly the object with a lot more precision. So if you're not too familiar with Photoshop, I actually have tutorials on how to cut things out and masking and selecting. So I'll leave a link to those and you can use these search keywords on my channel. But once you create a selection, you see these marching ant lines, we'll right click layer via copy and then I can just hide the original layer. And from here you could file save as a PNG or you could save it as a PSD. It doesn't matter, Premiere can use either. So I'll just close and I'll just save it on my desktop. Now in my media browser, I can actually find that object on my desktop or I could just go to my desktop, drag and drop it into the project media bin and then click and drag it on our project. Now remember, I'm keeping the timeline exactly where it was 
and I'm gonna cut the end of the clip as soon as it reaches that point in the timeline. So now I've got another transparent object sitting on top of the timeline and it ends as soon as the original clip meets with it and kind of fills it in. So I'm just gonna do that one more time to create our final clone. We'll do the snapshot. We'll take it into Photoshop because that's my preference, but you could do it in Premiere as well. We'll cut it out and again, find it on our desktop, drag it in, make sure it ends exactly where the timeline was. But now when I press play, you'll see that the original clip comes in, it fills in each one of its clones, however you chose to cut them out. And a cool thing we can do to create a boomerang style effect at this point, so that it loops on things like Instagram and whatnot, are highlight everything, right click and nest it into its own sequence. So now it's all together. And then I'll duplicate this sequence by holding Alt or Option and just clicking and dragging it over, or you could just right click, duplicate. And then on the second duplicated clip, I'll right click, set the speed and duration to reverse speed and press OK. And then I can press R to activate my rate stretch tool and make it go back a little bit faster on the rewind for a cool boomerang type of effect where the clones kind of become themselves. So it's a pretty cool effect. I've seen it a lot on Instagram and another alternative way that you could do it instead of having the clones get filled in is having the original subject leave the clones. So if I go to the ends of these clips and just kind of flip them around so that instead of meeting at the timeline, it end starts at the timeline and do that for each one, then we can get a different type of effect where the clones get left behind, which is also pretty cool. So one, two, three, another cool, interesting effect that you could play around with. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my new future videos. Go follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho if you wanna reach out to me. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.